I now look to Nigel Farage, MEP, to close the case for the opposition. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen, great debate, unusual panel, to say the very least. I'm un outnumbered on my own side <laughs> by Remainers. In fact, it's so skewed in one direction, I thought for a moment it was a BBC programme. <laughs> I've enjoyed all the contributions, but the most telling of all, I thought, was Rory Stewart's. Uh, spent very little time defending the deal, a lot of time attacking the idea, ideas of others. Um, and when you get a Remainer, a Foreign Office Remainer, backing the deal that he says delivers Brexit, you begin to worry whether something isn't wrong. I come into this debate not just as somebody who spent 20 years in the European Parliament, something I've enjoyed more than they have, I can tell you. <laughs> Apart from Juncker after lunch, who is great fun when he's pissed, I've got to tell you. <laughs> the, I come into this as the only spokesman on either side of this debate at any level of seniority who has bought and sold and traded and shipped goods all over the world. I'm a businessman way before I'm a politician. I want us to leave the European Union, to be free, to be competitive, to make our own laws, uh, and yes, to pursue a global future. And let me tell you this, what we did vote for in that referendum is perfectly clear, because every leading proponent of both Remain and Leave made clear, a vote to leave was a vote to leave the single market. A vote to leave was a vote to leave the customs union. Yes, please. Uh, why did Daniel Hannan stand on Thank you leader? very much. I was waiting for that. I was waiting for that. I said major players, of which Mr. <laughs> Hannan was a player. <laughs> he may be very well known at the Oxford Union, but on the streets of Mansfield, they don't know him from Adam. <laughs> so it was perfectly clear what we voted for. And look, I want Brexit. I want us to be free of this thing more than anyone alive in Britain. I've given it 25 years of my life. And I'm more than prepared, being the reasonable chap that I am, <laughs> I'm more than prepared to compromise. I'm more than prepared not to get everything that I want. But what I'm not prepared to do, and bear in mind, if Parliament does pass this on Tuesday, it will come to the European Parliament, who of course could veto the whole thing. So I'm going to face the same choice as to how I vote on this. And I can tell you, when it comes to the European Parliament, I am voting against this deal. We are, this is not a withdrawal agreement. It's a surrender document. It's the kind of thing you'd only sign if you'd been defeated in war and they had a gun to your head. It is with 39 billion and no say over the rules, it is taxation without representation. It, it, and, and we could go into the backstop, uh, but either way, she should never have signed up to that in the first place. The peace agreement in Northern Ireland had nothing to do with the European Union. It was brokered by the Americans. And today, as I speak to you, on one side of a field to another, from Northern Ireland to the Republic, they have different income tax rates, different excise duties, different corporation tax rates, and on top of that, of course, a different currency. So all of that can be dealt with by compromise. I am not prepared. No, I am not prepared. You had your go earlier. You got very excited. <laughs> got a glass of water. Too much for me, old Sam. <laughs> I am not prepared for us to leave one bad treaty, which at least had Article 50 in it and a means of getting out, for another treaty which we could be stuck in ad infinitum. This does not deliver Brexit. It doesn't even deliver Brexit in name only. It is a recipe for us to be at the mercy of the Barniers, the Tusks and the Junkers and the other, frankly, pretty vile, unelected bureaucrats in Brussels, 
We will go through years of misery with this agreement. Our relationships with Europe and our relationships inside this country will deteriorate as a result of this agreement. Brexit was a fork in the road. And there are times in life when we have to make a decision. Sir. Are you saying you will support a no deal instead of this deal? Well, give me a second, I'll come to it. <laughs> I'm going to come to it. So this deal doesn't work at any level. But you know, rejecting this deal will be a good thing. Rejecting this deal gives us two alternatives. And one of them is a no-deal Brexit. Now, I know many of you appear to have been brainwashed by Goldman Sachs and big business into thinking that trading on WTO terms is some kind of disaster. Because you think we have a wonderful free trade deal with the European Union. We don't. We pay a net 10 billion to be over-regulated and to prevent us reaching out and trading effectively with many other parts of the world. But there's a way through this. We leave, and by the way, I spent 25 years arguing for a free trade deal as a businessman, but it's now too late. And, and the real failure of negotiation is that our Prime Minister never, ever asked for it. But here's what we do. We leave at 11 p.m. on the 29th of March on WTO terms. Most of the scares that you were told about aeroplanes, financial institutions, have in the last few weeks been dealt with. And we apply through the World Trade Organization, who've said they will act as an independent broker. We invoke Article 24 of the GATT Treaty. And that then gives us two years of no tariff, two years of no quota, two years of continuing on current trade, but outside the customs union, outside the single market, and with the Brexit that people voted for actually having been delivered. I wonder, and maybe even Rory doesn't know, I wonder, because the one person that really holds the cards here is the Prime Minister. Because whatever Parliament says or votes next week, the legislation is in place. The EU Withdrawal Act is in place. Article 50 itself was voted for by 500 MEP MPs, and it says we leave with or without a deal. Maybe Theresa May has decided, if this vote goes down on Tuesday, that for the sake of her legacy, she'll take us out on those terms on the 29th of March. If she does, as far as I'm concerned, she'd be an all-time heroine. Yes, please. Thank you. OK, so the, the answer to this question is that she has said that she will take as legally binding a vote on the Thursday on whether or not to extend Article 50. So yes, she said there'll be no snap general election, and there was one. Again and again she says things and then does the opposite. I don't believe a word she says. I mean, not only is she the worst Prime Minister we've had in my lifetime, I think she's the most duplicitous as well. So I wouldn't take any of that as read. There is one other alternative, of course, to us leaving on that basis, and it is extension. And I do think the country would be unhappy that our, that our political class had had two and a half years to sort this mess out and had failed to do so. But what would extension cost us that the deal itself doesn't? Well, it wouldn't cost us any more money, it wouldn't cost us any more lost opportunity, and it would mean that the Conservative Party, the men in grey suits, would come for Theresa May and we might just get a Prime Minister who actually believes in delivering not just what the people voted for, but what she promised in her own election manifesto. What is going on in this country is deceitful and wrong. People voted to leave in a referendum. They voted again to do it in a general election. 500 MPs voted for Article 50, but this deal does not solve the logjam, and I am voting against this deal. I believe the House of Commons will vote against this deal on Tuesday. And whether that means a risk of extension of Lord Adonis, who's on my side, it's difficult for me to get my head around that this evening. <laughs> but whether that means his voice for a second referendum gets louder, frankly, as somebody who's given his life to wanting Brexit, 
I'd rather take the risk of a second referendum than get trapped in an awful new treaty like this. So I urge you to vote against this motion tonight. And I also urge you, please have a bit of confidence, folks, in our ability as a country to govern ourselves, to make our own rules, to find our place on the world stage. Europe is a declining, diminishing part of the world. It's important, and look, I love it. You know, I've, my children are bilingual. I've worked for French companies. I've drunk more Spanish wine than any of you in this room. <laughs> and I may do later. I love Europe, but I don't like the European Union. I want Brexit. I want us to be free. This deal doesn't deliver it. Please oppose the motion. Thank you.